Welcome everyone to the session Intercepting Network Traffic, uh, APM Intercept Plugin Workshop uh, by Anil Patidar. Uh, we are glad that Anil can join us today. Without any further delay, over to you, Anil. So thank you everyone for joining in and showing the interest uh, for this particular demonstration, which is on APM Intercept Plugin, where we will be seeing a real scenarios, like how can we make use of this Intercept Plugin in our day-to-day -day automation to enhance the code coverage or, or functional coverage. Uh, so let me just introduce myself a little. So my name is Anil. Uh, I'm a senior SZ, or you can say SZ3 at Games 24X7. Uh, and I have total 10 years of experience in building mobile and API tests, tools, and frameworks. Uh, currently, I'm working uh, with Games 24X7 for past six years. Uh, I also love to contribute on open source projects like ATD, which is a distributed automation framework for Android and iOS. And a device form plugin, uh, which is a pl which is the plugin which helps uh, you know uh, maintain the devices for you, where you can do a lot of stuffs. So quickly move on, and let me just give you a uh, some. Uh, let me share one uh, big uh, you know little background about the my experience at my eleven circle. This is what the product I'm working for last uh, uh, last six years. And this is the app, uh, you know, it is a fantasy, best fantasy sports app uh, in India, uh, where we have uh, around, uh, uh, maybe we can say 10 plus million of users. And what we have achieved so far is uh, we have 300 plus test cases automated for the regression suite. Uh, and we have around 65% code coverage. Uh, and we have a uh, some code coverage tools as well for our uh, front-end app where we can get that code coverage for our this uh, React Native app. Uh, that's where this number has come from, came from. And the second part is, uh, as of today, uh, uh, our regression shoot of 300 cases takes around 30-odd uh, hours, 30 to, 30 to 35 hours. Uh, but we have cut, cut it down by having our in-house device lab where we have 30 odd devices connected, but we run up to on 10 devices. And this time has, has been reduced up to three to four hours. Uh, but this is also not a sufficient. Why I'm saying it is not sufficient because uh, we, we are in a competitive market where we need to ship the app uh, very frequently. The releases are every week and uh, we cannot spend our day time also uh, doing the regression. Hence, we have these 300 plus automated test cases. Uh, working uh, on my level circle, we, we, we observe that our test cases, auto, front end automation test cases, stability is a big concern for us. And, uh, and we have a limited time, uh, you know, to, sh to do the regression for the app. How can we achieve or reduce this, uh, you know, execution time so that we can ship our app as soon as possible. Uh, and in the search of the same, we have came across this plugin, which is a APM intercept plugin, which I'll be demonstrating you, uh, where you will be seeing a real execution on this app. How I'm trying to uh, mimic some of the uh, corner cases behavior. So, as a QA, you must be uh, aware that. If you have to, suppose if you are doing a manual testing, it is easy for you to mimic some of the uh, scenarios. Let's say if you want to check the app when your specific service is down, what you can do is you can just bring down that service and check by opening a mobile app that, okay, how my app is behaving, behaving in that scenario. But what, uh, what if I ask you that you have to do the same thing with your automation execution? Uh, where you are 10 devices, where 10 different cases parallelly executing. It will be a bit difficult for you to mimic such scenario. But uh, luckily, uh, Sudarshan, Sai Krishna, and Srinivasan, who are the core uh, you know, contributor for this plugin, uh, have you know, put in an effort and they have given us the ability now to mimic such uh, uh, scenarios. Scenarios like, you know, 
where we can mimic our uh, uh, you know dependent API responses like a 400, 500 error codes. Or suppose if you want to test something on the app with a different set of data, as of today, how you do is you depend completely on the backend system. You prepare the data and then uh, all of this data comes to the app and then you test that out. But with this uh, intercept plugin, we can do the interception of the network calls. We can change the requests, responses, headers, status codes, and so many things, which will ha eventually help us, you know, uh, uh, increase our this coverage basically uh, functional coverage or code coverage you can say because such corner cases uh, testing is a bit difficult with the automation so let's move to the next slide so what are the challenges so as of today it is a common challenge it is i i, I would say that it, it will be common for everyone where we have dependency on api to render the data in front end uh, most of the app as of today make the api calls uh, and fetches the data and show on the UI. So that's where this uh, uh, dependency we have uh, on the uh, 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 APIs. Can we get over uh, on this dependency? Is this possible for us? One way to do the, do is that we can have a mock server which is completely running, but that has a cost. I mean, that will be a separate setup for you. Uh, and it could be it, it would require some highly skilled person who can do that for you right and another challenge is difficult to simulate different server responses when i say server responses say 500 error case or 400 404 how can you simulate for your mobile app uh, and uh, data preparation for testing various use cases on the app so data preparation is the biggest time taking tasks on the front end automation i would say suppose if you have to test something on the app you have to have some pre cooked data so that your app will be ready with that data right so this is the most most uh, you know uh, challenging and time time consuming task in our automation and and how can we reduce our automation execution time is it really possible to re reduce the automation execution time we can say that okay let's not use a hard weight let's remove uh, let's use explicit weight, but it's still, uh, 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 you know, apart from these things, we have still a dependency on creation of a data for the uh, for uh, for the testing of the features, which takes uh, you know sometimes significant amount of time. And how can we improve our code coverage? So the, how why this code coverage is very critical. Why I'm focusing on this because uh, assume that. Uh, when you run your regression on a particular app version and it and your code coverage says that you have covered 95%, you'll be more confident that, okay, whatever has been developed, you have covered 95%, right? Uh, that's where uh, improving a code coverage uh, for the app will be the helpful uh, thing. Uh, so these are the challenges as of today uh, where which, which we are facing. So what we are looking for, the solution that solves basically a problem where you know we need a tool which can modify or mock or mimic a api requests and responses when i say request why do i need to you know mimic the request i can i mean it is just making a request to the backend server why do i need to make mimic the request because suppose if you want to uh, logged in with the one user only but you want to change the user id in the request you can you should be able to do that so that for the same session you can mimic a different users you don't need to log in again and again and the responses is the same where you know i i mean something was being shown on the app and and you want to change the dis, uh, the responses we need a control over network interaction during automated test cases execution um, also, we need a seamless integration with our current automation framework. So we also were looking for the solution where we don't need to make any code changes or very minimal code changes in our existing framework, which can you know help us do this. Because sometimes when we think about such solution, the solutions are a bit uh, you know extraordinary where you need to. Uh, you know, re-architect your framework, automation framework. You have to spend a lot of time to uh, incorporate such things. 
but I assure you that with this uh, APM intercept plugin, it will be a simple line of code for you uh, where you can do much more. So uh, here is the outline what I will be presenting so you can plan your next 30 minutes. Uh, uh, there is a prerequisite will be there where you have to have APM2 install, UI automated driver for Android should be there. In, we will also drive, I'll also show you how can we install this intercept plugin, how can we activate the plugin, how to configure automation uh, framework. So we need to make a small changes in your automation framework uh, so that this plugin can easily be integrated. So you, you rest assured that you will get everything in this particular demo. And then next uh, and very interesting part where we'll be actually seeing the mocking. I will be using the My11 Circle, my particular product app. I will be mimicking some status codes, uh, API request headers, responses and everything. But yeah, definitely if, if, if time permits me, then I'll cover most of the things. Otherwise, maybe I'll show you the code. So uh, let's understand the concept is a net. What's a network traffic interception? We need to understand the concept. I, I mean, some people might be aware of this, but let me just rephrase it. So network interception is nothing, but when your client makes a request to your backend server, then there is a network call happens, right? It makes a call, let's say in this example, an API call, you see a URL where you see example.com, login, username, and some input JSON will be there. So interception is nothing but we uh, a tool which can capture and analyze this data, network data, send over a network. And it, it, is, it should be capable enough to do for HTTP and HTTPS request and responses between client and server. This is the inter network interception as the concept. This is how interception works. Now let's move to the, uh, the architecture or we can say just high level one you know, workflow I'll show you for the APM intercept plugin. So for APM intercept plugin, how it works. So as of today, this is how the APM flow looks like. There is a client library, your automation suite, which is written in JavaScript, Java, Python, anything. Then you have APM server, which basically talks to your APM driver in your case. If it is an Android, then you can say it is a UI automator. When it is iOS, it can be XUI uh, driver. And then it, it, uh, it converts the, those commands into mobile understandable uh, language and then it just mimic the behavior like clicking getting a text and this is how it happens here it comes the apm plugin so when you view uh, when you have apm plugin in our case it is an interceptor plugin how it works is it basically sits uh, beside the driver so what it do is when your command goes here and there it also listen to your network traffic. So from your app, whenever it makes any backend API calls, any network calls, any network calls, it will list, start listening. And you can instruct uh, your plugin, your APM intercept plugin, what you want to do with that uh, request. If you want to change the URL or change the header or change the uh, response, anything you can do. So it is a very powerful plugin, yeah. So let's move ahead. Uh, so what are the features it offers? So basically it allows you to update out outgoing request URLs. It allows you to fully replace or partially modify the request payload, especially in post method. Update the request headers, update the response headers, fully replace or partially modify the responses, body, update the response status code, like 400, 500, those cases. Sorry, there was a glitch. Yeah. So we covered this much. So let's go to the plugin installation. Is it really easy to install this plugin? I would say it is very easy. You need to have APM to install. You simply run this command APM plugin and install. The source should be NPM and the plugin name APM interceptor and the version. You always should use the specific version because 
since this plugin is under the beta, uh, I mean to say there are a lot of development is happening. You, you should be using the specific version where you can rely. So this is the installation. I'll skipping. I, if, if I run it, this will do the installation for you, but I'm not doing it. It should work for you. And as I said, there is a prerequisite. APM uh, 2.0 should be installed. UI Automator 2 should, uh, driver should also be there. Why UI Automator 2 should be there? Because we will be interacting with the Android app. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. How to activate this plugin? So now we have APM 2 installed. We have a uh, APM plugin installed. How can I activate this plugin? So to activate any plugin in the APM ecosystem, what you need to do is when you are starting the APM, you have to say hyphen hyphen use plugins and the name of the plugin. If you have more plugins, just say comma separated in the next plugin name. You can also very well do with the server config file also. So this is the basic command, which I'll be running in next one minute. Uh, we will be activating this plugin and then we will be running our automation cases. Configuring your automation framework. So now the question is that, okay, Anil, I have my automation framework already ready-made. Now you are saying that, okay, this plugin can help me mimic some of the network behaviors. How can I do it with my framework? Do I need to make a lot of changes? I would say no. You have to just change your capabilities where you can say to your APM intercept flag, is it true? This particular flag will tell APM that, okay, there is a something like an intercept plugin, which will which you have to uh, consider while processing the commands coming from your client. I mean, your test automation suit basically. So this one capability you have to add and rest assured, everything will be done. Before, so assume that in your test, you uh, there are 100 test cases. In all 100 cases, you don't want to, you know, um, change the requests and responses but in particular case you want to uh, do this interception so you can write this line of code where we have java exec script executor you have to pass the key as an interceptor start listening what this command does is it so after running this command once the apm receive this instruction it will tell the apm plugin uh, which is an interceptor plugin that boss start listing the network traffic now onwards so whenever now any call happens uh, any call goes to the network from the app let's start listening to this so this is what it does and the very last thing i will not bore you this is the very important part is add a mock this is where you will be telling like what you want to do uh, what you want apm interceptor plugin to do I want my interceptor plugin to mock the status code to 500. This is the code we'll do. I want to uh, change the response JSON. This is the line of code we'll do. This one line of code will do everything for you. And there will be no change in your existing automation script. So let's jump to the uh, demo. One quick check, connect a real device with the machine. Uh, in my case, I have already connected. Start the APM server and activate the plugin. We will do that. And next step is execute the test. Hope everything goes well because uh, usually when there are demos, things doesn't go in a way. So I first, I should first start uh, the APM uh, server. So this is the command APM to start the APM server. To activate the plugin, as I said, hyphen hyphen use plugin we have to use and APM interceptor is the name of the plugin. When I hit the enter button, you see some set of logs here. It, it has started the APM server on default IP and then there is a 4723 port. And here you see it has also available plugins. You see APM interceptor and it is activated meaning you have successfully activated this plugin and you have also UI Automator 2 installed and you are, this APM is APM 2. So if you are trying with APM 1, it will not work. So please ensure that APM 2 has been installed and running. After this, let's move to the ID uh, where we will be seeing uh, the real scenarios, which I think most of you are not waiting, waiting. 
So before that, let me just walk you through about this framework. It's a very simple framework, which is a, a Maven project where there are no fancy dependencies, just Java client uh, of APM is there, TestNG is there, and Jackson I'm using. Just three dependencies. There is no nothing fancy. Next is we have Pojos. Pojos, most of you are aware. These are the page objects. Then we have a shoot file, shoot file. We have a test. I have listed so many tests, but I'll try to cover as much as possible. Uh, and then we have a utility. Uh, this utility has a drive, driver manager, which basically help us to create a session. So why don't we start with this driver manager only? Let me show you what is there in this class. Maybe let me just make it small. So if you see this line of code here, it is, there is nothing. We have a desired capabilities as normal or device name, automation name, UD, ID, everything is same. Just one capability within my previous slide I shown that is APM interceptor true, which is which is necessary to let APM know that there is some concept of interception is there. So this capability you have to set it up. So this, I think the same way your existing automation framework also look like just one line of code will help you out. With this, this will create a driver one session for you. Now moving to the actual scenario. So what scenario we, would you like to see guys? I have four options. Uh, status code mock, uh, modify response payload, modify request payload, uh, or you want to modify the header. Please raise your hand or uh, Nilesh, please help me what people are more interested in, uh, what demo they want to see. But I personally want to show you the status code one and modify response payload partially. I How think can... people are mostly asking for response payload, uh, modify request and response payload. So I think- Awesome. And one yeah. of them is asking- Why are you missing? So it's a mixed response, but yeah, but I think uh, you can choose and move ahead. Uh, majority is basically for modify request and response. Definitely, 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 sure. So I'll go with the modify response payload. So let me first show you the code so that you can relate. Otherwise, you know, it will be difficult for you to understand. There is no fancy code here. If you see, this is a driver manager. And if you see, this is my test class, mobile test class. What I'm trying to do is change the team names, series name for first match. I'll show you what, what I'm trying to do. Forget about this. And there are some... Uh, I am doing the actions like clicking on the sports tab, clicking clicking on the cricket tab, such thing. And some code is there. Now we will run one line by line. Since our checks are this, that our APM server should be running, it's running. Now I should run this particular test in a debug mode. I'll just simply run in debug mode. Let's see what happens. Hopefully everything should go fine. See, it is started bothering me. Where is that debugger only went somewhere? Sure, here you can see. So in the console log, if you see, if I could show you, it is showing that uh, app Android app setup is done. Session is created successfully. I'll just make this app little larger here. And APM intercept plugin has started listening the network traffic. Where did we write this code? How did it start at plug? If you see in my before method, there is one line of code, JavaScript executor, execute script, interceptor, start listening. Now I'm telling this plugin that boss, now whatever the API calls my app max, just listen to them. And what I'll tell you, just do it for me. So this is what it is doing. What we are trying to do with this particular case. So what I'm trying to gonna do is, since we are in APM conference and our competitor is Selenium, right? Not a competitor, but uh, our, we can say, uh, from where we have born, right? This is a, so APM versus Selenium. We make this match as a APM versus Selenium. Our series name will become APM conference something. And I'll tell you one interesting thing. This is a production app. Uh, it is a debug app, but it's a, it's a pointing to a production. Now what I'm trying to do is I want to change this data. 
how this data is coming over here this data is coming from the backend server this is there is one backend api call we are making here which is this i'll just show you it's a it's a get matches this get matches one api call being made to a production server but what i'm trying to do here is i want to update my response when i click on cricket it will make a call to get matches so when get matches call happens i want this data to be changed as per my requirement so that i can test some particular scenario so i'll change this names to apm versus selenium and the kerala t22 apm conference let's see in the action so uh, what we are doing is we are if you see here we are just creating one uh, array node it so it has a uh, one path json path it takes which is so this api will have some json right so this this is the path which which will change the team one team one's name d name to apm team two's d name to selenium and the series name to ap the official conference right so let me just quickly run this it is there is nothing to show you here i'll show you something very interesting later so after this line of code let it add, let it get added all of this configuration now uh, now this line of code also let me run ha huh. so now this is the mock we need to do so here if you see this line of code add mock right this is the uh, javascript executor add mock this is the mock instruction i am going to tell in the mock configuration what i'm trying to say is let me run one more line of code what i'm trying to say is boss for just update a response body for this get matches api and what you want to what you have to do is you have to update these things you update you find this path in the json where the team one's display name change it to apm team two's display name change it to selenium and the series name here on the top change it to the op the official conference 2024 correct so this is the instruction we are giving to the interceptor plugin i'll run this line of code let me just make a change so that go back to the, the previous state ha huh. here after you do this you you get the id what this id is significant is once you do this it makes it creates an id so that if you want to suppose make a call again later and you don't want this mock to happen you can remove this mock also so this this is where this id will come in a picture now what i am going to do is i am going to click on the sports tab is a football tab i'll click on the football right now you see aks versus gst right let's click on the football okay it has clicked the football and see here it's a magic now i would say the official apm conference 2024 apm versus selenium it has successfully mocked for us and the rest of the code is nothing just the assertions are there if i run this it will just simply pass for us because it will simply do the assertions uh, for us so it we have successfully basically mocked this behavior response hai na so what i'll do is maybe after this test case i'll relaunch the app and we'll see whether the data is coming again or no so it will simply run the code i kept so many debugger so here there is one more code i wanted to show is remove mock this we had stored this id right this id we need to remove because if if other case in parallel is running it should not get this data right so we need to remove after we have used it so i just simply removed now what i'll do i'll kill the app and let's see by relaunching what happens i think without a relaunch only it has done what we were thinking of so here you see england versus australia is there there is no apm versus selenium correct because in, i haven't changed the production data i just mock the response so let me just do the quick time check uh nilay is how much time we have if you can help me with that yes uh, we are about 15 minutes uh, away from ending the session 
Sure. Maybe let me just now take uh, people uh, for the other scenarios also. Let me show them. One more interesting part we can see is this. This is one scenario I wanted to show, which is this status code mock. What we are trying to do is in the status code mock, I will on the login screen, uh, when I, I'll, I'll show you how it is going to work. Sure. So if you see, this is a, there is one login screen. After clicking on a continue CTA, there'll be an OTP screen coming. Winning this gate OTP, API call will be made and I will be getting the OTP on mobile number. I got it in my other mobile number. And I can enter the mobile. But I what what if my this gate OTP service is down? Uh, if it is giving 5800, is, is this my app is capable enough to handle this error? Let's check that out. And, and, and I'm saying it is a production, not a Docker or any other staging environment. So let me just run this now again. This time it will be quick. I think we will not be required much of the things here. Uh, I'll quickly show you what needs to be done. What we are doing here, I think we can stop by here. This line of code I'll show you. Uh, and the remaining code is uh, self-explanatory where we are just entering a mobile number, clicking on continue CTA, change the number. So let's see, ignore this error. App has been launched. Okay, app has launched, mobile has been entered. Uh, this is the demo, it's a, it's a bad luck for us because my this number got exhausted. Maybe I should give it some other number. I'll, I'll quickly make a change because uh, so all in all it has exhausted so I don't know take it I'll, I'll, I'll show you one thing I have a recorded thing for this I was prepared for such things so if you see this particular video, what we are going to do is after this, this line of code, if you see, we are running one by one uh, here, we were waiting for the screen to load. We are entering the mobile number 70195. It will enter a mobile number here, a bit slow. But it will enter. Maybe I'll speed up a little. Now it has entered the mobile. I'll click on continue CTA now. This line of code will click on the continue CTA. There's this, there was a glitch. Uh -huh. So after entering the mobile number, you see in the automation only, it has asked for the OTP. What we are trying to do now is we will mock the 500 status code now. So we'll click on change city again from the automation itself. So it will change city, change num number will be clicked here. Change will be clicked here and it will go back to the login screen. Okay. Now, if you see this add mock, we need to do, we need to tell our interceptor plugin what he, he has to do, right? So we are saying that whenever this gate OTP uh, API is being called, you just return a status code as a 500 so that I can test the error message here. So let's do that. Let's first add the mock. It will simply well run next line of code here uh, like this. It will be, huh. so it is adding a line of code here. It has added the, added the mock. Now if I click on continue, what should happen? It should show the OTP screen or it should show me an error. Is my app is capable enough to handle this error? Let's see that. I'll run the next line of code and let's see that. So just waiting for this action to be performed. I think, yeah, you see, something went wrong has come, but we never seen this error. Why? 
because now the my server the my get otp status code i have mocked which is a 500 and this 500 error handling is something like this something went wrong on the app so this is it guys uh, on the mocking i'll just go back again to the code side to show you this code in little bit details so i'll just remove this screen mobile screen and i'll just expand this if you see this mock code is very simple it takes two parameter one is url for which you want to mock and the status code and also one thing you have to notice is there is a different uh, you know uh, way of uh, you know configuring this so if i say you have to update the request header you need to pass something like this a map only with a url and a header but if you see header map header is again a map where i'm saying remove the cookie right remove the cookie so that i can test my internal server error on the app or something like that when i so because authorization will fail right so there are various scenarios i'll push this code to the github and share with you maybe you can connect with me on the linkedin for more details uh, and we can definitely have a QA and a now perfect sounds good yeah i'm online there are a bunch of questions anyway uh i'll quickly read out to you Sure. Uh, by the way, just a quick time check. Uh, we are about, say, uh, about eight minutes uh, to end the session. So I'll quickly start picking the question and read out to you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, is this plugin only available for Android? It has been asked by some anonymous attendee. So I'll basically just yeah. read it out. Yeah, is it this is plugin currently for available for the Android uh, app only. Uh, for the iOS, you have to contribute. <laughs> it is <Exactly>. open source. <laughs> That's a great answer. OK, uh, so I think that's taken care of. Uh, uh, there is a question from Ritul Mishra. He's asking, I'll just read it out. Can it directly intercept the network? Uh, don't we need to enable anything on the application itself to intercept the network? That's a really interesting question, meaning he was giving the correct intention to the details. Definitely, we need to have the network uh, proxy enabled in our uh, mobile app so developer can do that that's a small network configuration in your android uh, um, android manifest.xml file where just pe one piece of code maybe after this session i'll show you what that code will be need to be added in the app and they have to build this app and then you can start uh, intercepting your network traffic otherwise because the security reasons are there one should not be allowed to see these network traffics right so definitely yes Perfect. Uh, uh, the next question is by uh, Subaredi Chinta. Uh, I'll just read it out. Uh, for APM intercept the plugin to work in our app, do the app need any specific files present in the app? For example, to intercept network traffic on Android apps using Charles, we need have we uh, do we need to have Charles certificate in the app bundle? Yeah. So uh, there is no specific uh, certificate would be required at app level. But there will be one uh, certificate will be installed by this plugin in your device. This certificate will basically have a contract, uh, okay, and that will allow you to intercept. So there is no certificate required in the app. But yeah, APM intercept plugin we have a, a certificate which basically get installed in your device, and then only this uh, uh, you know interception works. Perfect. Uh, going with the next, again, it's from Ritul. Uh, he's asking, will network intercepting also, uh, will also increase the automation execution time? It will decrease your automation uh, execution time. Why I'm saying? Because see, as we saw in the previous example where I just changed the mesh child APM versus Selenium. If I had to do really for my product, I need to make so many API calls to get to the, that state. You know, I need to create a match. There is a match license, right? I need to publish a match, create a match, then it will come to the app. But we did it on the fly, right? We just logged in, we changed the response, and we clicked on one button and everything was visible, right? So it saves your time. Won't increase any time. Perfect. Uh, I think the next question is from Ritul himself. Uh, he's asking, will it work on iOS as well? I think you've already answered that it needs to be contributed, so I'm skipping that. Uh, the next question is from uh, Govin Narayan Sahu. Uh, 
is asking to achieve mocking uh, do we need to have an app source code access or backend server access no nothing you just need a an app with the network uh, configuration that's it you don't need to rely on uh, developer's code uh, you it's a simple process as you get a debug build you will also get the same debug build from the developer and you don't need to worry about their code base it's a straight you have to just configure such things which i which i showed you in your automation framework and it will be ready for you perfect sounds good uh, the next question is from andre shaikin uh, how do you handle proxy certificate installation on device for https interception to work thank you as i said plugin itself does it and if you have to do it yourself also i'll show you in the uh, in our hangout zone where you can join in i'll show you how can we do that over there if uh, or i'll let you know over there in the details because it requires some specific steps to be done perfect uh going with the next uh, anonymous attendee is asking do we need debug build for this plugin to work or this will work with non debug build as well no it should be a debug build because usually as a company uh, i mean as a if you see android uh, build system also they give lots of cap capabilities in a debug builds only like uh, you know loggers of your apps right in the release builds you see less loggers because you have to have a good performance of your app for the users right you don't want much logs to be dumped right hence this such configuration will be there with the debug build only all right next question is from tiago uh first of all thank you for sharing with us uh it is is it possible to display the request and response payloads in the test execution logs yeah i think that yes uh, that is, that's possible this plugin does this uh maybe uh, i'll show you in the hangout john there's a, a section over there it, it it returns you what was so when you start listening the when there's a line of code right it starts listening after that whatever it listens it keeps a track of it at the end you can also see that i mean you can print it so that capability is there cool quick time check we are 2 minutes i think we'll take a couple of more and then uh, probably we can uh, continue with the hangout session uh, one anonymous attendee is asking can we use this with source labs source labs so uh, see this question i think is asked because that is a remote device lab i mean it is a cloud device lab right so if you somehow get connected through the same network it is possible otherwise there will be some challenges uh, i'm not very much sure but there will be challenges because the the condition here is that you have to have the same internet connected basically your device your machine where you are running the automation and in this case the uh, uh, the network will be separate so maybe the vpn can help here or something but yeah perfect okay uh, i think we can take one more uh, i'll just end with this uh, rahul gupta is asking how do we get to know which github repo will be uploaded to awesome as i said uh, um you just follow me on the linkedin uh, maybe i'll post one post around this where all the resources i'll upload uh and this ppt also if i can share somehow you can you have access i'll update this ppt also with the required details but give me some time uh, anna uh, yeah okay i think we are running out of time Uh, I'd like to really thank everyone because there was a nice ninety people were there. They were so patient, and I didn't see any drop, and and they had their amazing questions as well. I'm very happy that people were so much interested. So thank you so much, guys, for your time.